Greetings. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Owen Taylor, and I have the pleasure of being the pastor here at Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And I'm glad that you're joining us for worship uh, on this Sunday, February the 27th. Well, friends, uh, we do have a few announcements that I'd like to 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 enlighten you with uh, before we get started. And one is I always like to thank the team that comes together so that we can worship God together from the people who pick out the music to the, the ones who are monitoring the Facebook feed this morning. Um, and I also, this is the beginning of, uh, almost the beginning of Lent. Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. And we will be having a worship service here in Beaver Dam in person uh, at Beaver Dam United Methodist Church on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, but if that doesn't suit you, I invite you to join us on your way into uh, Richmond on Wednesday morning. We'll be doing our Ashes to Go, where we'll be uh, in positioning ashes at the, uh, the old physical therapy place uh, right there in, in downtown Montpelier. So I encourage you to, uh, to join us there as well. And we also have a Lenten study that is starting this week. Um, on Tuesday, we have an in-person uh, a small group study entitled Not a Fan that will be at 10 o'clock at Rousey's Chapel on Tuesday. And we'll have a, the same type of session uh, Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, either via Zoom or here in person in Beaverdam. So if one of those interests you, please reach out and let me know so that, uh, so that we, can, we can connect up. Um, if you happen, if this uh, time together speaks to you in a particular way, I invite you to hit that like and share button right there on Facebook so that others can also partake of it. Um, but for now, let's get ready to prepare our hearts and minds for worship by lighting a candle to let us remember that Christ is physically here present with us. Let us pray. God, it is good to be here. It is good to hear your word, to share your story, to see Jesus for who he really is. God, come and be with us in this place. Be with our hearts. Be with our being. Be with all of our mind and strength, Lord. And we ask that you that we ask that you open up the scriptures to us this morning. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be here with us as we worship together. Amen. Well, friends, our first reading this morning comes from uh, the Old Testament, uh, from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 8 through 13. Listen to these inspired words from God. Amalek came and fought with Israel at Repidam. Moses said to Joshua, choose some men for us and go fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I'll stand on top of the hill with the shepherd's rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He fought with Amalek while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel would start winning the battle. Whenever Moses lowered his hand, Amalek would start winning. But Moses' hands grew tired, so they took a stone and put it under Moses so he could sit down on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side of him, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his army with the sword. And then our gospel re uh, reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 12, verses 30 through 31. Listen to these words from the Gospel writer. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
The second is this. You will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Friends, for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Did you watch any of the Winter Olympics this, this year? I am continually amazed at the athleticism of the competitors, especially the bobsled teams and the figure skaters. I love to watch the bobsled teams work together in pushing and jumping into the, into the sled at the top of the course and watch them as they support each other on the way down the hill from the one being the pilot to the other, the other one being the brake person who slows them down at the end of the race. It's such strength and teamwork. And then you have the figure skaters. Now, I admit, figure skating is really more of Tina's thing than it is mine, but I do sometimes like to watch the couple skate. The way they lift and swing and twirl each other around takes a desire a dedication and a strength that I just don't have. You know, this idea of strength and teamwork came to mind this week as we are wrapping up our sermon series called Created to Respond. We spent the last few weeks exploring the ways that we are created to respond to God with all of our soul, with all of our heart, with all of our mind. And the topic that we are that we're delving into this week with all of our strength you know when it comes to talking about responding to god with strength we have a story that appears in exodus where moses is demonstrating great strength during a battle with the with amalek and his army let's try to paint the scene the israelites are in the desert after coming out of Egypt, God is providing them with manna and quail for food. They find themselves under the attack of the roaming Amalekites. Moses is getting up there in age, and he realizes that he physically can't take the stress of battle. So he comes up with a plan to fight off Amalek and his army. Moses goes and stands high upon a hill and tells Joshua to gather some men together to go into battle. So he does, and they go into the valley below, and it appears to be a horrible battle. Can you imagine what is happening all around them? Swords are being swung. There's sweat. There's blood all around them. And Moses, standing on the hill, is watching the battle take shape. And he notices that every time he raises his arms and his staff up, that same staff, that same rod that turned into a snake in front of Pharaoh and had split the Red Sea, Joshua and the Israelites win, start to win the battle. I can envision Joshua looking up at Moses on the hill for inspiration, and Moses encouraging them during battle. Now Moses, Moses also noticed that every time he lowered his hands, they started to lose the battle. You can imagine that Moses' arms grew tired fairly quickly. And this is where Aaron and Hur come in. Aaron and Hur were doing for, doing for Moses what he couldn't. They were helping him hold up his arms and his staff so that Joshua and the Israelites would win the battle. They kept this up all day long until sunset when we read that Joshua claimed victory over, Amal over Amalekite and the army with their sword. What they all realized is that the people of God we're going to experience defeat if Moses, Aaron, and Hur didn't help Moses hold up, hold up the staff. 
we can see that that as a community of faith and with God's help, they were going to be successful. You know, I also think it's fair to say that Moses was loving God with all of his strength in this text. You know, it's, it's interesting to me how our physical strength changes over time. I am probably like most people that when I was younger, I was fairly physically strong. I could use my physical strength to do whatever I wanted to do. I could lift heavy objects with ease. I could stay up all night and not miss a beat the next day. I could do all sorts of crazy stuff and physical labor all day long and not feel it the next day. Now, today, not so much. I know when I stretch to my limits, when I overdo it, and it takes time for me to recover. And I think this is the season of life where we find Moses in today's text as well. Moses is older now, and he's beginning to understand his limitations. And that is something, you know, that we all need to do as we grow older. We need to learn our limitations and adapt to those limitations. But do you think Moses' Moses's limiting physical strength in the story changes Moses' desire and dedication to love and serve God? Friends, as we progress through life, our physical strength does change. And we can't do what we used to be able to do. And we need to find it, that inner strength to realize it and accept it. But that doesn't mean that we stop serving God. It means that we seek other ways to use the physical strength that we have left to serve God. Let me give you an example. My grandfather was a Methodist minister, and as he grew older, he started having issues with walking. He had trouble balancing, and his legs were failing him. He was living at the Hermitage in Richmond, which is a retirement facility, at the time and he prog progressed where he needed to use a walker all of the time he could have let this get him down and stop him but he didn't what he did though was that he went two or three times to to the health care center which was like the nursing home part of the hermitage and there he would visit with people he was using his physical abilities to visit with other people. He was serving in what we would call a ministry, a presence. He couldn't fix what they were facing, but he could show them just by him being there that they were loved, that he loved them, that God loved them. Now my granddaddy did end up in the healthcare center when he couldn't get around any longer and he needed help with doing just about everything. And, he, and even while he was bedridden, he still continued to care with people with the strength that he had left. I remember him asking the nurses how they were doing, how the members of their families were doing, and what they were struggling with in their life. He was still performing a ministry of presence, even though he physically couldn't get out of bed. The way my grandfather lived his life reminds me of a quote that is commonly attributed to John Wesley. The quote is, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. 
When I first heard this quote, I would often focus on the do part. Do all you can. As if to say, you need to do more. That what I was doing already isn't enough. But now, when I look at that, I see that John Wesley is, all in, is also telling us to do all you can. The key word is can. Friends, we are called to the can, wherever we can, to whoever we can, for as long as we can. Why would John Wesley say this? Because our physical actions matter. Whether we fight, fight on the front lines with Joshua or whether we can give our physical comforting presence like Moses did, our strength matters. Loving God with all of our strength really is tied into the other ways that Jesus tells us that we are created to respond to God in the Gospel of Mark. For our strength is not only physical, but it's emotional. Emotional in the way that we need to have strength to be able to name our feelings and strength in how we handle them. Strength is also part of our whole being, part of our soul, in the sense that it's our inner strength of persistence that helps us stay connected with God through our prayer life, through seeking God in everything that is around us. Strength plays an important role in our mental capabilities as well. Joshua gained mental strength, mental fortitude, by staying focused in battle, by seeing Moses up on the hill with his hands raised in the air as a form of encouragement. And we gain mental strength when we stay engaged in growing our minds, in reading scripture, in learning more about God, in using that brain, that muscle, to gain mental strength that God has given us. So can you see that loving God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind and all of our strength is really intertwined together, put together by, the, by God who created us so that we can love God fully with all of our heart, with all of our being, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength so that we can love our neighbor as God loves us. Friends, can I get an amen? Amen. Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, spend just a moment here in silent meditation over the scripture, and then uh, I'll close us with a word of prayer. Let us talk to God. Lord, you call us to draw near, yet we fail to hear your voice. We sleepwalk through life, ignoring the needs of people all around us and worrying about our own desires. Forgive us when we shut out the call to climb into your presence, when we make excuses to put off that journey. Have mercy on us, Lord. God, you are a forgiving God whose mercy is never ending, whose hearts abound in steadfast love. Because of the love of Jesus, nothing can separate us from your love. For this love, we give you thanks. Heavenly Father, we ask that you open our hearts to see the plans you have for us. Jesus, open our minds to your possibilities and open our eyes to your light. And Holy Spirit, 
Speak to us today and strengthen our faith so that we can carry God's love into the broken world. Amen. Well, friends, I hope that you have found our time together uh, fruitful, and I, I encourage you to remember us in your giving, in your tithes and offerings. Uh, you, can, you can go to our website and give online, or uh, just simply drop a check in the, in the mail to us at the P.O. Box. Uh, but either way, it allows us to continue the ministries of building God's kingdom here in the community. And for that, I am thankful. Well, friends, uh, let's get ready to take on the day and the week and uh, receive this benediction. God gives us strength, and God calls us to respond to that gift by doing all we can, wherever we can, and whenever we can. Go and give back to God what is God's. Go with the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.